Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> yourself, man. Nick, what is the thinking behind this then? Well, ministers don't see how this can pass, but in Downing Street there is a feeling that there's momentum in Theresa May's direction. And I was talking to a, sort of one of the hardest of the hardliners in Jacob's European Research Group, and I got the clear impression that this person is on a journey. Mm. And the thinking in Downing Street that even if the Prime Minister loses, if the loss is much more narrow, that will help her credibility with the EU and her credibility with Parliament. And the thinking of separating the divorce agreement that's all you vote on tomorrow you don't vote on the future relationship the thinking is that that presents a challenge to Labour saying look Labour Party you can live with most of the elements of the withdrawal agreement so vote now on this argue later on the future. What will Labour's response be, and indeed the Cabinet's? Well, Jeremy Corbyn has uh, told the Prime Minister tonight that he will not support a blind Brexit, and he's making clear, Prime Minister, you know perfectly well that we have real problems with the Northern Ireland backstop, and our ideas for the future will deal with that, so that needs to be on the table uh, tomorrow. Now, in Cabinet, I am picking up complete and utter despair. I said to one Cabinet Minister, why is the Prime Minister holding a vote when she's pretty sure that she's going to lose? And and using very strong language, this cabinet minister said to me, fuck knows, I'm past caring, it's like the living dead in here. Oh, God. This cabinet minister then went on to say, Theresa May is the sole architect of this mess. It is her inability to engage in the most basic human interactions that brought us here. Cabinet has totally broken down. Ministers say their bit, she gives nothing away. One side thinks X will happen, the other side think Y will happen, and the Prime Minister decides on Z. Hmm. Well, you know where we're going next. I'm joined by Tobias Elwood, a Defence Minister, Jacob Rees-Mogg, Chair of the European Research Group, the Labour MP Stephen Kinnock and Sarah Wollaston from the Independent Group at the Labour Front bench were invited but chose to say no. Um, so to Tobias Elwood, first of all, do, do you feel like you're in the living dead? Not at all. I mean, there's some big challenges here. And let's not uh, underestimate what tomorrow is about. It's a key day, probably the last opportunity to get uh, this particular uh, motion across. And it's important to recognise that the Prime Minister is obliged to put this tomorrow because of the conditions that were set on the extension of Article 50. That's why this is coming. And it was wise to split the, the two up. But forgive Don't me, Tobias, just, you, you've already heard that Labour's ruled it out, the DUP have ruled it out. You must believe there's a chance of winning. So just where are your numbers coming from then? Well, let's just break that down. The Labour are, is opportunist. They just simply want chaos. They want another general election. Yes, of course, we have to work closely with the DUP, but there are many uh, Labour MPs that represent leave areas of Britain that could very well support this. But what, the plea to we, all we can, parliamentarians... We can find any this finish, evening. No, let, let, let me, me just ask you about the numbers, because this is really critical, isn't it? You're saying there's a great number of Labour MPs in leave areas who will support what she's putting forward tomorrow. How many? I didn't say they will. I'm saying I'm putting no. the case to them, and no doubt to other parliamentarians that are, that are on your show. You just had the British Chamber of Commerce pleading with the Westminster bubble to put... Britain first. If we want to honour the referendum deal, then we need to get this across the line. What we've done here is split the two up, as was said in your introduction. So whether you want, you know, Common Market 2.0, EFTA, the backdrop to that is the written, is the withdrawal agreement. Yep. Let's get that across the line and then we can have a transition period to then discuss what happens next. I understand the theory, but you've already been told that you won't get the support that you're searching for. Tomorrow is the day we're meant to be leaving. You're putting back on the table a horse so dead, flogged to death, it's practically a glue stick. I mean, no, what's you're, the you're, point you're, in you're, that? I'm sorry, but you're simplifying uh, and almost misleading viewers with that. The withdrawal agreement is critical. Even Keir Starmer and Labour support it. What they don't like about the withdrawal agreement tomorrow is the political declaration that's attached to it. We split the two up because the European Union have specified you do not need to do the latter part in order to get the extension. Okay, if so we didn't put that tomorrow, if we didn't vote on it, we wouldn't have that time to the 22nd of May to actually sort out the rest of the detail. That's why we're obliged to do this by 11 o'clock tomorrow night. You have no strategy. You live politically hand to mouth. And by Again, agreeing... Again, that's incorrect. Well, look, that, I'm just uh, saying, sorry, when... I mean, I've got to push back on that. that everybody is... Theresa May came in here, picked up this, and 
every parliamentarian has got a different perspective as to what Brexit means. None of us are going to get what we want. All of us have to move forward. We had some motions a couple of days ago. Not one of them got through. So when we say don't follow Theresa May's deal, what deal is sitting there waiting in the wings to take over? None of us is going to get what we wish for. The country is pleading for us to move forward. It requires the art of compromise. That's what Parliament must do. OK, look, as you well know, Theresa May, as one person put it, fell on her sword yesterday and missed. She told the 1922 committee yesterday her plans for resignation. She didn't tell <coughs> Parliament. She didn't tell the country. That is so disrespectful. I mean, what doesn't she owe it to everyone to tell them what her moves are rather than try and fight the people that she's been trying to convince in vain for years now and failed? But what you're not saying is then where do we go if we don't follow this motion? What actually happens if we didn't put this tonight is that we'd have until the 12th of April to explain to the EU what on earth happens next. And that takes us into an ever softer Brexit or not leaving the EU at all or potentially a general election. Okay. Are well, any of these things in the interest of any parliamentarians? I don't think so. I'm not getting in your way here. I'm about to speak to Jacob Rees-Mogg. What's your message to him now? The man who nearly voted for the deal this week. Sorry, you're talking to me still. I'm asking you what you would say to Jacob Rees-Mogg, who nearly voted for the deal. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, Jacob will recognise again where we are. If Jacob uh, doesn't join uh, in Duncan Smith, um, Esther McVeigh, Ken Clark, and all those other people, and Boris Johnson, to uh, step in forward from their anchored positions to do what is best for Britain, then none of us will get the Brexit that we want. So I do hope that we can come together tomorrow for the good of the country and also the good of our party as well. Tobias Elwood, thank you very much indeed. Jacob, would you describe yourself as a man of principle? Um, others will describe me as they see fit. You've taken a principled stance, haven't you, against the EU. You've been principled against Theresa May's deal. Uh, you said it would turn the UK into a slave state, the greatest vassalage since King John. You've said all that. That's all correct. I think the deal is terrible. You told me in December that nothing was going before. to be worse than that deal. Well, remaining in the European Union is worse. Well, you didn't say that at the time. Well, you evoked I, I, slavery. I, I, you used uh, yeah, language that yeah, said there right, would be no right. way back. That's absolutely true. The deal is a bad deal. Uh, we pay £39 billion for nothing. We retain for 21 months right, okay. the slave state that you refer to. And we have an Irish backstop that has no specific end date. This is a bad deal, but it is legally out of the European Union. When we spoke in December, it looked as if the alternative was Mrs May's deal or leaving without a deal, and I've never been frightened of that. Let and I thought we could leave tomorrow at 11 o'clock, as British voters expected, without a deal. OK. That is now clearly off the table. The Prime Minister has removed Do you know it what? and I, Parliament I, has voted against it. I'm just going to repeat this because it matters, Jacob. You evoked slavery. Yeah, we now, will Now, of be. course, people are allowed to change their mind, and we want our parliamentarians right. to be able to compromise. But you didn't say, well, I'm not quite sure. No, you is, said it would turn the UK into a slave we, state and then you consider voting for it. For 21 months, our laws under this deal will be made without us having any say over it. That is true. So you are going and to that sign is up a terrible something agreement. that will put the UK into a save, slave uh, state. Well, after 21 months, that will end. You whipped up hatred and no, fear with language hate. like that. You know what it's no, like no, to No, 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 frankly, abuse. I didn't. That's simply not true. Um, that if anyone's whipping up hatred, it's the BBC who complained the ERG just last week to the National Front in France. If we're getting silly language, it's from the BBC. I'm sorry, if you're following did not the BBC you say, say that? this deal is going to turn it us is. into a slave state. So what do they say now? They say it's a bad deal. And they see that they have been let down by politicians who promised to deliver Brexit, promised that Brexit means Brexit, and have failed to deliver that. You and that, I think, is an enormous disappointment across the country. I'm not going to pretend this deal is a good deal, and I will support it very reluctantly because I think the alternative is failing to deliver on the referendum result I think at by all. By using language like that, you make a mockery of language, uh, you make a mockery of truth. I think this is a silly way of looking at it, quite honestly that we will be unable to make our own laws for that 21-month period. That's that not what you true. said. You said I it said would turn the UK right. into a slave state. Well, that's what that means. OK. Well, I the would, ability, would suggest that's quite dangerous ability, language to use if you're ability, then going to turn around and say, actually, I can vote for it. Well, I can be a slave state for 21 months because freedom comes at the end.
end of it. You're, but you're that a is slave better. already. You take your whip from better. the DUP. No, you take your whip from the DUP. I They're a party in Northern from... Ireland, and you're an English Conservative MP. I do not MP. take my whip from the DUP. You're following them I'm... to see what you but should do next. The DUP provide confidence and supply to the Conservatives. We are in a close degree of alignment with the DUP. There are many things we agree with on the DUP. With the DUP about, but I don't take my whip from the DUP, I take it from the Conservative Party. I was elected on a Conservative you don't, ticket. Because the Prime Minister is offering mm. you a deal that you can't vote for unless the DUP well, goes first. The, the DUP are obviously the custodians of the Union, that that is very important to them. And the United Kingdom is our country, and I think the United Kingdom is extremely important and more important than the European issue, the very nature of our country and what it should be. I wonder and the, the DUP are making their views on that. I, I uh, wonder no. if the truth is actually that you've just been outmanoeuvred, that you're not actually a very good strategist, that you um, have failed to remove the PM in a no-confidence right. motion and you've failed that, to that may be right. a deal. But none of this is about my being a strategist or my being a tactician. That's complete irrelevance. What this is about is delivering on a referendum result that 17.4 million people voted for. It's not about individuals. Well, it's about the great mass of the British people. It's not delivering. Dom Cummings wrote yesterday, right. you lot are remains useful idiots. So you well, are actually delivering the opposite of what you wanted. Well, no, I think Mr Cummings has actually said that voting for the deal will allow us to come out in the end. I think that's correct and that the backstop is endable. And <laughs> I may... narcissists. Uh, Mr Cummings has a fine level of abuse. A moment ago you were saying you didn't approve of abuse and now you're quoting abuse. There seems to be an element of humbug well, in that, no, I'm I may say Well, no, I'm just asking you what you make of somebody who says that you're remains useful idiots because that well, might be Mr. the way Mr Cummings that it comes was a across. very effective campaigner and very important in getting the referendum result. Uh, if he wishes to criticise me, he's completely okay. entitled well, to Well, as it turns out, um, Theresa May has pretty much chosen her own time to leave. Do you believe the next next Conservative leader can be a Conservative, uh, can be a Remainer? Um, well, I thought at the last uh, Conservative Party leadership election that we ought to have had somebody who believed in Leave rather than somebody who believed in Remain. I think to get the second stage of this through, uh, we need somebody who believes in our future outside the European Union. And you're backing Boris Johnson? Um, th there isn't yet a contest, so wait and see. But you're minded to back Boris Johnson. I think Boris Johnson is an enormously capable campaigner who was able to win in London twice. I admire him greatly. Uh, but there isn't yet an official contest, so little patience, I think, is necessary. Sarah Wollaston, if it does go the way of a long extension, what does the independent group do then? Do you field candidates for what will essentially be a European election? Of course. And we would, if there were candidates, we'd like to see candidates that are, are positive about Europe, who are representing Britain in a constructive and positive way in Europe, rather than the rather negative approach that, that others will be taking. So you're getting ready to field candidates now? Well, we are in discussions with the Electoral Commission about becoming a political party, because that would be the first stage to being able to field candidates. So, so when you say you're in discussions, sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. just to clarify, what stage is it? Have you applied now to be a political party? Well, that's right. We, we have started discussions with them and started that process of application, because that has to be completed before we could field candidates. But what will you be called? Um, well, I think these are all things that we're, we're discussing with them, so I'm going to save that for another day. Give us a sense of how many candidates you might field for the European elections. Well, of course, the, the point is these are done on a list system rather than on, a, on an individual yeah. constituency basis. And I think that is one of the difficulties and perhaps one of the reasons that there's been a disconnect um, with, with Europe. But we'd like to make a positive case for Europe and, and try and reconnect people if we're going to be going into a longer extension and fielding candidates. But, I mean, this has been an absolute national tragedy, hasn't it? I mean, we talk about the over 17 million who voted. To, to leave, but would those people have all voted if they had seen the mess that we end up with now? Because what's blindingly obvious is there were so many different versions of leave and we tried to boil that down to something very well, simplistic. Well, we might get from this mess a general election. Mm -hmm. You could stand candidates, presumably, in Remain seats. Is that what you are thinking you're doing? Well, of course. I mean, if it, when it comes to that, we'd love to be in a position to be able to make a really positive case and have a different offer, because I think what we're seeing is the Conservative Party marching off to, towards the ERG and the DUP, whose values Would many people don't share. Would you stand in a, a more Remain seat in order to get re-elected? No, I'm, I'm committed to the seat that I'm standing in. And all in. the other TIG members yes, are? Yes, of course, because we're all deeply connected with the constituencies that, that we, we represent. But the point is that I think that 
that we need to have a new offer. We've seen the Labour Party marching off to the left and the Conservative Party progressively marching off to the right. And I think there's a huge void. And, and I think people are crying out. Millions of people feel that no mainstream party currently represents them. You won't be voting tomorrow for the PM still. <coughs> um, I wonder if you stand back and think, well, the leader of your former party has just resigned and you won't be involved anymore in the process of choosing the but direction I mean, that what, goes in there. What a tragedy that, 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 that this has arisen. She's been forced out and for all of six hours, I think, she, she had the support of the ERG, many members of the ERG, but now because the DUP have decided they're not going to vote for it, they're taking their whip from the DUP and they've abandoned her. I mean, it, it was a com completely ridiculous thing and we're now left in a situation where people do not know what the future framework would okay. look like. It's well, let's, extraordinary. Let's go to Stephen and, and pick up on this deal tomorrow. It was meant to bring Labour MPs like you on side. Will it? Will you vote for it? No, not at all. I think it's fundamentally dishonest what the government's doing. It's always been clear that the withdrawal agreement and the political declaration on the future relationship are an integrated package. They're integrated in Article 50. They're integrated in the Withdrawal Act, in our own law. And what's more, I think what we've heard this evening is it, the clear plan on the hard right of the Conservative Party is to get rid of Theresa May and put one of their own in, which makes the negotiations on the future relationship even more risky. That's why we have to have a political declaration now which has real teeth and meaning. It should be based on membership of the single market, a customs arrangement, uh, getting us out of the European Union, yes, but doing so in a way that protects the jobs and the livelihoods of the people that we were elected to represent. You are falling into exactly the trap that Nick suggested, which is that Labour gets framed then as the party that's stopping Brexit. Are you happy with that? I think we have to have a Brexit negotiation between the parties, which we should have been having for two years now, which reflects what we saw on Wednesday night. I know there was a, it was quite messy Wednesday night, but one thing that emerged clearly is the hard-line Brexiteers are not even at the races. They don't have the numbers in Parliament. There is a clear majority for a sensible, pragmatic, bridge-building form of Brexit. You've got a hard-line Brexiteer here. Is that how you see it, Jacob? Um, no, I think that we're not looking for... Uh, this type of crash out. We always wanted a sensible deal, but we've never been afraid of leaving uh, without a deal. We think that that can be coped with, will lead to advantages coming through. I'm, I'm not concerned about that. Everybody's talking about compromise. The obvious thing the Prime Minister needs to do is reach out to those uh, in the mainstream of our Parliament for uh, the deal which is about single market customs union leaving but without wrecking the economy. And, and, and are you and prepared the, to compromise? Because the, the common market 2.0, which is your preferred option, seems to be um, not a runner anymore. Does that mean you then shift onto a customs union? I, I'm very happy to have a, a discussion which is around a customs union, single market, Basically, those proposals, the Ken Clark proposal and ours, are in essence singing from the same hymn sheet. Let's work together. Uh, let's isolate and face down the minority of a minority that's been running the show for far too long. But that requires some honesty from the government to bring the political declaration and the withdrawal agreement together Well, you know they tomorrow. can't. I mean, there's but a very, there's a very simple or parliamentary reason, I should say, why they can't do that. Does it... That's a gimmick, though. Why not have the honest discussion? Don't brush it under the carpet. We can't pretend that the future relationship with our most important partners, allies, trading partners, is not going to be discussed tomorrow. These are the most important Hang issues our second. country's You're facing. You're the one that the says, World I don't War. want no deal. And she's saying, you have to help me get this over the line because that's the way we rule out no deal. Then we have something at least in place on May the 22nd. Surely a pragmatist can see that. But you getting what over the line? The deal is an then integrated you package. Yeah, you're part of it all is that the process. withdrawal agreement and the political declaration. You cannot have a blindfold on £39 billion of taxpayers' money so that Dominic Raab or Boris Johnson can run, turn the country into a European version of the Cayman Islands. No, thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Thank you for coming <laughs> in. <laughs>